Does WhatsApp really have a backdoor? Thousands of MongoDB databases have been deleted across the web. Cardless ATMs sound like a terrible idea, and Celebrite got hacked. Coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, January 17, 2017. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire, we have officially reached our goal for a video RSS, so I will be working on setting that up this week. Once it is completely finalized, I will send out the link to all of my social media accounts, like at snubs on Twitter, so you can subscribe as soon as it is available. Thank you again, patrons. You guys made this possible. Really, really appreciate your support and your help. And by the way, my voice sounds terrible because I just got back from ShmooCon. It was super fun. So first off, WhatsApp has a back door? What? Okay, hold up, y'all. Before we freak out, let's do some due diligence and see what this story is all about. So on January 13th, TheGuardian.com published a story discussing a vulnerability in WhatsApp that seemed to be a flaw in its inherent security, allowing Facebook to read your messages from the app due to a way that WhatsApp implements encryption. Many, many people pointed fingers at WhatsApp and said it could be used for governments as a backdoor. Basically, while WhatsApp does use the Signal protocol for encryption, the app can also generate new encryption keys if you are offline, making you re-encrypt messages that haven't been marked as delivered in the app. WhatsApp will automatically resend the message with new keys and you cannot prevent it. You are only notified of the change if you have opted into encryption warnings. Signal by Open Whisper Systems does not have that same kind of vulnerability. So some security researchers say that this is not a vulnerability, but a limitation due to how cryptography is handled for such a popular app. Ars Technica points out that you can continue the same conversation when you buy a new phone because the encryption key is updated for that new device, for example. This is a story of convenience over security. If a consumer gets annoyed with having to verify new cryptographic keys whenever they change, they may choose to ignore encryption altogether because it gets annoying. Others, like myself, use Signal and prefer to be notified of any changes in security, however annoying they may be. The main reason for debate is whether or not this is a backdoor. Researchers say that it is not, but it would still be possible for a government entity or a hacker to potentially gain control of a new key without your knowledge, albeit would be really, really hard to do so. If you do use WhatsApp and you are worried about your key being changed without your knowledge, you can turn on notifications in Settings, Account, Security. Plenty of web developers know about the MongoDB databases, which are generally used to store customer information. But problems arise when that database is accidentally left public, and attackers can easily obtain database information by searching for it on the website. Last week, many businesses had a huge headache due to a new attack that removed the databases and leaves ransom notes in their wake. But when a business pays up to get their customer information back, they're completely left empty-handed due to several attackers trying to get in on the ransom. Unfortunately, publicly available MongoDB databases can be deleted, copied, or completely written over, causing serious implications for businesses that use it. The ransom note simply includes an email address, a Bitcoin address, and a payment amount required to get the data back. Over 29,000 databases have been erased so far, and according to Ars Technica, if your site requires a MongoDB database, just make sure that it isn't publicly available by blocking port 27017 or binding local IP addresses to limit access to servers, and MongoDB has a blog post available about avoiding these kinds of attacks. So recently, several of my friends have mentioned that their Chase accounts have had fraud attempts, and I wonder if this story has anything to do with it. In a story by Crimson Security, cardless ATM transactions are being used to steal thousands of dollars from checking accounts of users without their knowledge. A few banks have begun using these new ATMs that allow a customer to withdraw money without a debit card by using their phone instead. That just are already automatically sounds like a terrible idea. A customer downloads the mobile banking app and they verify the phone number associated with that phone. Then they approach the ATM and log into the app. The app asks for a withdrawal amount and a seven digit code appears on the phone or a QR code appears on the ATM, which is then entered into the ATM to get their money out. A card and a four digit pin are not required. So there's 
it seems like there's no two-factor going on here, even though you require a phone. So first, an attacker needs to know the customer's username and password for their bank. After logging in, the attacker can add a new mobile number to their account and change the email address for notifications. The attacker can then download the app on their phone and use it at an ATM to get cash. Unfortunately, as opposed to credit cards, ATM and debit transactions aren't necessarily always covered and your money does not have to be covered by the bank. They can deny your claim for a refund due to the fraudulent transaction. So it's really, really important to review your bank's policies and federal regulation E, which is linked below in the show notes, as well as implementing two-factor authentication if available through your bank. Since the consumer could be liable for the losses and have no recourse, the bank is less likely to fix this problem that we are sure to see more of in the near future. In Chase's case, they are simply lowering the withdrawal amount at these kind of ATMs. Celebrite, yeah, they're a company that sells their services for smartphone data extraction, most popularly known for a device that they sell called the Universal Forensic Extraction Device, which can extract SMS messages, emails, call logs, and a lot more from a physical mobile device in your possession. And on Thursday, their data was hacked and given to motherboard.vice.com specifically over 900 gigabytes of data, including customer info, databases, evidence from seized mobile devices, and technical information about Celebrite's products. Celebrite sells their tools to the government agencies in the US, possibly along with Russia, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates. It's just one of the many hacks that we are bound to see against surveillance companies. On Celebrite's website, they said the, quote, company is conducting an investigation to determine the extent of the breach and goes on to say, quote, the company is working with relevant authorities regarding this illegal action and are assisting in their investigation. Thank you again for being patrons of ThreatWire. You, of course, can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net, as well as your own fur baby in the show at the Hush Puppy Perk level, like the new ones that we have this week. They are so, so cute. I love them. Thank you so much for sending those in, and keep on sending them, too, because I will continue to share all of them as soon as I can. I have just added a bunch of new perks and goals as well, so check them out and let me know what you think. If you cannot contribute, that's cool, too. You can give the show a thumbs up, and you can subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. Let's see if we can get our channel up to 300,000 subscribers. We are so, so, so close to that goal. That's gonna be huge. I'm freaking stoked. Can't wait to get to 300,000. Uh, lastly, as always, you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I am Shannon Morse. I will see you on the internet.